So it will probably come as no surprise to you that uh, growing up, I was always one of the tallest in my friend group. And so uh, there was some perks to this. And one of the perks was that whenever we were playing sports, um, I wasn't always chosen first. In fact, I was almost never chosen first when we were picking teams. But I wasn't ever chosen dead last. Especially if it's for something like basketball, they're like, okay, maybe Isaac isn't the most coordinated. He maybe doesn't have that athletic edge. But at least he's tall. He can do something, right? But you probably remember that uncomfortable feeling, you know, everyone's lined up and they're going down, this person, this person, and everything in you is like, oh, please don't let me be the last one chosen. <laughs> Maybe some of you were that last person chosen, I'm not looking, don't want to stir up, you know, old childhood trauma, if that was you. But we don't like being picked last for things, right? We don't like being chosen last. There's something in us that wants to belong somewhere, and this continues the whole time we live out our lives, even as we grow up. If you get passed over for a promotion at work, it's not the best feeling in the world, right? You, you want to be seen, you want to be recognized for the work that you do. Maybe if you're trying to make new friends, you're trying to get into, into new circles, you start to think after a while, you know, is it something about me that people don't like? Or, you know, I, I feel like they don't see me for who I truly am. I don't really find my circle yet where I belong. And then on the flip side, you know, if you've been on social media for any length of time, you've probably seen one of those like adoption videos where parents adopt a kid and, and the kid is super excited and they're signing papers and it's, real ter it's a real tearjerker, right? Because it, it hits something in our hearts because we all want to have our people. This is the, the place where we belong, the place where we're seen, where we're known, where, where we feel like this person has chosen me, they want me. And I think that this is actually something that is part of our human experience. This is something that all of us want. And when Paul was writing today to the letter to the Ephesians, he's writing to the church in Ephesus, this city, and he's writing to them about the plan that God has to bring his people to himself. He's writing about what God has done, how he's intervened in human history in order to bring his people to himself. And because this is part of our human experience, the people in Ephesus were much like us, right? And so his words have a lasting impact even to our times today. In writing about the plan of what God has done, Paul says this. He says, Just as he chose us, God chose us, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. It's pretty deep to think about. That God, who is eternal, he has no beginning. He has no end. He was here long before the universe was created. He will never have an end. This eternal God, before the foundation of the world, chose you. He wanted you here. He wanted you in this church. He knew that he would create you. And he chose you before the foundation of the world. And he wanted you to experience his love. It says that he chose us before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. And the love that God has for you is not only eternal, it's uniquely for you. He doesn't just lo love humanity as this kind of big blob. He loves you. He loves the things about you. He loves your sense of humor. He loves the things that, that you hope for, that you dream for, your talents, your hobbies. He loves you. He loves you in a way that's personal, in a way that's, that's unique to you. And his love for you is a fatherly love. It says that he destined us for adoption to sonship as his own through Jesus Christ. So something in the mind of God, something in God's plan means that he wants to adopt us. He wants us to be his children. He wants to show us this fatherly love through Jesus Christ. So what does Jesus do? How does Jesus help us experience this adoption as children of God? Well, all of us, in our own way, every single human person has walked away from God through our own choices. We've turned our back on God in some ways. We've chosen things that we knew were wrong, that we shouldn't have done. And as a result of that, we've, we've distanced ourselves from the family of God. We've, we've kind of walked away. We've made ourselves, in some sense, unchoosable. Like, who would pick us for their team? But God chose us in Christ through adoption. What he did is he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus, who is fully God. God became man. 
And he died on the cross for every single one of us. He took upon himself all of our sin. He paid the fine for our sin. Why? So that now we could have adoption back into God's family. Now the way is open for us. Now we're free to enter back into this loving relationship with God that God had chosen, had planned for you before the foundation of the, of the world, before the foundation of the entire universe. God sent Jesus for you so that you could receive adoption. And now those who repent of their sins, who turn away from it, who cut it out of their lives and say, Jesus, I'm coming back to you. I want to come back to your church. I want to believe in you. I want to put my faith in you. Now we get to be a part of his family again. And God becomes our father. And it also says, Paul says, in Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance. So this inheritance, this is what fathers do for their children, right? They provide an inheritance. Well, the father's like, yeah, I know we have to do that, but I want to spend some of my money before they get it. But the job of a parent is to provide an inheritance. So what inheritance does God provide for his children? Well, he provides this heavenly inheritance that we get to spend eternity with him forever in unimaginable joy. This is the inheritance that belongs to us as children of God. And Paul says, this is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption. Like this is the promise. This is what God has given us to make sure that we know that we're heading towards our inheritance. He says, we who had believed in him were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. And part of becoming the family of God is that God actually comes to live inside of us. That through our baptism, through our confirmation, through receiving Holy Communion, through the sacrament of confession, through all these things, God is pouring out his Holy Spirit into us, which is the promise of our inheritance to come. God comes to live inside of us. We're sealed with the mark of God. Like Jesus is basically claiming us for himself. This, these are mine. God's saying, these are my children. I'm sealing them. I'm marking them with my Holy Spirit. And that is the pledge within us now, the Holy Spirit who's changing us and getting us ready for heaven from within, getting us ready for the inheritance that is coming. It's really amazing news. And yet God, who has chosen us from, be, from before the foundations of the world, he will not force himself upon us. He won't force us to be his children. He wants us to be his kids more than, more than anything, but he won't force us. Just like in an adoption, if a parent adopts a child, Eventually, the child is going to have to say, yeah, you're, you're my parents, or they're going to walk away. This is the same with us. We have the choice now. God has chosen us to be his children, but we can say, God, you know, I've got a lot going on in my life. I don't really need this right now. And we're free to do that. But God is desperately hoping that we will say yes to his free offer to become a part of his family, to become his children through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so I hope today... And I hope that every day going forward from this moment, you will say yes to this free gift from God, to say yes to the adoption that he wants for you, to say, yes, I want to be a son of God. Yes, I want to be a daughter of God. And I want to receive the inheritance of heaven that he promises.